Hey there, Heather Boyd Wire here. Today we're going to make some really cool names that can be used as hairpins or scarf pins or shawl pins. A big thank you to Bethel for requesting that I make a name hairpins and Donna who asked for her name out of wire. So here's some I made in previous videos. I'll link them up below. So some simple little loops with beads and stuff. And then on a live stream last week, I made the treble clef and the bass clef for a scarf pin, or they could be hair pins, and then this little abstract one as well. So I cut a couple feet of this wire. It's 16 gauge wire. I bought it at Michael's. It's a really nice sturdy wire. And what I'm going to do is start like about 10 inches or something from the end, 8 to 10 inches. And then you want to form your first letter. And I'll link up a bunch of tutorials that I've already done for letters and for words so you can get an idea for your own name. So for the Donna, I'm just going to do the little curve of the D. And then we're just going to bring this down here. And I want to make it a decent size, but not too big either. So already you can see the D coming. And we're just going to bring this one across. You might have your own lettering style as well, and that's totally fine. However you like to do them. Mine tend to be a little bit stiff. There's a lot of ways you could do them more loose. So then we want to do the O. So we're just going to bring that around here. You can use a Sharpie. You can use a pen. Whatever you have that's the right size. So let's just go ahead and do the O. We're going to bring that around. If it's too big just kind of pinch it in a bit to make it a little smaller. And then we need the N. So we're going to bring this up here to do the N. Now the way I like to do my M's and N's is I just do like a little kind of a jog here, just a, a teeny little loop and you'll see why. So we're going to bring this around just to start the loop and then what I do from there is I hold this snugly with the flat pliers and just pull it so this loop becomes quite small. So it just gives like a little bit of definition. So we're just going to go around here form it like that. You might have another way that you like to do the ends and the M's and that's totally fine too. So definitely have a look. You could have a look on Google too for calligraphy letters as well to see what what you like. And so there's the N, the first N, and then we have to do another one. So same thing. We're going to bring that up and get our smaller round pliers and just start the loop just to start it there. This wire is quite stiff so you will need to do a lot of manipulating with the pliers. Now hold it snugly and pull it tight so it's similar to the other loop and then you can get your large pliers again, your large round ones. Bring that around and just kind of wiggle it around so they're more or less the same. This one looks like it could have gone up a little higher so it, you're not going to really notice once it's all together, like if they're little imperfections, it's not a big, big deal at all. So we're going to bring that around and at that point you can adjust it a bit if it's not looking quite right. And then we need to do the A. So we'll get our little form again, bring that around and around and around. Make sure that's about the size that you want. So for the A, I just wind the wire around to the back. Just keep adjusting it, bring it around to the back. And if you see that loop is too big again, just kind of pull it in a little bit. It's fine. And we're going to bring that one up. So to make the front part of the A, just make sure your circle is around the size you want. And then I just fold it over, but because this wire is quite stiff, you're going to need a little bit of help with your pliers. So just hold your little pointy uh, pliers there, bring that around to the front. So there you have Donna. And what you need to do is you're going to have to do like a little loop at the end. So let's just bring this around so you can see what it looks like. So there's the name. And what we want to do here is we want this to come around to the back. So I think the best way to do this is I'm going to bring it up to the top 
because I don't want it to flip over. So if we bring it up to the top, and if you want to define that little bend a little more, just put your flat pliers there and bend it up here. And then we want this wire to come along down to here. So I think the best way to do that is we're going to have to do kind of a little loop so it has a wee bit of a spring on it. And so what we're going to do is just bend this one across here. Okay, and actually I'm going to bend it down a bit. So let's bend it that way, straight to the back. And we're going to do something that looks like a bit of a, a pin thing. So just put your round pliers in there, bring this around. You'll see in the previous video that I did this kind of thing with the abstract one. You're making like a little bit of a spring. So this circle is, you're just going to have to decide how big you want this circle to be, it's going to be hidden to the back so it's no problem. You could even do a triple one if you want. On the abstract one I did, I think it was like a triple one. So we're not going to cut it yet. Let's make our little loop on this side. So the loop on this side is what this is going to go through. So you want this to come up a bit. Okay, not too much because you don't want it to start to look like another letter. And just hold this and come around here and we're going to make a closed loop there. So bring this around and you're going to want it to push it a little bit to the back so the wire will actually be able to get in there. So if you do have to push it back a little bit you could definitely do that. That might be actually a better idea. So we're going to push it back a little bit so it's actually sticking to the back a little more. Gotta love how I improvise while filming the video but <laughs> it's all good so let's just clip that and close that shut so that's like closed little circle it's to the back and then this is actually going to go through there to hold it in place but what you want to do if it's uh, for a scarf or the hair this has to be more curved so you see right now it's very flat so let's go ahead and get a round form and start to curve it around. So this means we'll be able to stuff some hair in there or a scarf or whatever you have. So keep in mind your function, like is it a bulky scarf? Is it a thin scarf? Is it hair? Like think in terms of how much space you need in there. And then at that point you could bring this around. Okay, and that's gonna go down here. So this is actually gonna go into that loop. So let's just imagine where it's going to be. Make sure this is somewhat flat there. Now I think you're going to need at least a centimeter which is about a half an inch, three-eighths of an inch uh, just to have that go through otherwise you don't want it flipping in and out. So what you can do now is clip this say about yeah about that much beyond the loop. You can always adjust it after. If I were you I would get a file, a nail file or a metal file and just soften up the end there if you have a Dremel file, uh, that's great too, electric one, but if not, no big deal. So there we have, so what's going to happen is this gets, is when you want to put it through there, you're going to actually pull it out and in, and then that's going to stay in there. And if there's too much space there, just clip it a little bit. So for example, if we have this little fake hair here, it's just a bunch of wool that I braided up. If we're going to put that one in there, say it's for the hair. So imagine you had a braid and then other hair underneath it to look cute. So we're going to stick it, we can stick it in here and this can either go like behind the hair or it could even stick through the hair. See, but because it's a little bit pokey, I haven't filed it. So that's, you know, not the best because it can get a little bit caught, but we're just going to stick it through here. And then that you would just like pull that and stick it through that loop. So there you would have like Donna, for the hair clip. So if you want to put it in a scarf or a sweater, you're just going to put it through, you know, how and hold as much of the sweater or the scarf that you want and then just pull that, stick that through the end and there you would have your little name on a scarf or a sweater. So thanks so much for watching the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more DIY wire art and jewelry making videos. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I go live and when I post new videos. 
And if you'd like to share photos of your work, be sure to join the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club on Facebook. I'll link it up below. And if you'd like to check out my work on Etsy, my husband and I specialize in custom wire, wedding cake toppers, and funky jewelry. And also, I have a mailing list going, so if you'd like to join my mailing list, I'll mail you my Wire Art Essentials ebook, and that's linked up below too. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you the next time.